and thank you for the panelists for being here with us today to discuss this very interesting topic that seems to have gotten a lot of chatter, but yet there is still so much to be discussed. So while we all have seen AI seep into our lives, whether we like it or not, with very strong opinions about it, we are at a sort of a crossroads in the PR industry. Things can go two ways. We can either reject everything AI has to offer and settle in for the vintage era to set in, or we can accept the AI benefits and moved into a, move into a new uncharted future. So let's start with a peek into your perspectives on AI and the future of work in the PR industry. So Jagriti, let's start with you. Can you share with us your perspective on how AI is shaping the future of PR and communication? Hey, very good afternoon, everyone. So thank you so much, Tarunjit, for this question and starting with me. Uh, let me start with a small story. Uh, I like the word vintage, you know, so <laughs> the story goes back to a little vintage time where a kid comes back from school, must be five, six years old for a second standard and is very depressed, um, doesn't know what to do. If, maybe it's end of life, <laughs> while I see. And uh, the grandfather who's around in the house quickly notes uh, and, you know, asks, what happened, child? Yeah. The kid says, you know what, today I saw someone copying in the exam. So... Well, it's so sad that person is going to have success and I slogged my ass out and I may not be successful. Uh, the grandfather had a smile on his face and he said something so, so noteworthy is that don't worry. Copying is an art and not everyone can do it. Uh, this was such an existential question then, and I think it still persists. And by the way, no brownies to guess who the child was. It was me. <laughs> so yeah so it's so etched in my mind that listen let people copy let people do the GPTing around but at the end of the day dude uh, if you can't stitch the story together and if it doesn't sell to the audience and you don't get paid for what you are supposed to do I think it's of no use so uh, rightfully taking a cue from this I would say that AI is definitely here to stay and uh, at the end of the day it's upon us the human mind to make sure that we harness the power of AI appropriately. Awesome. Shapreet, what about you? I think uh, taking on from something that, you know, Jagriti said that, of course, there's a tool and I do think it's a fast evolving technology and it really has the potential to make teams more productive and aligned. But the discretion and the judgment of the PR professionals doesn't go away. You know, I think that's going to play a really important part in how we utilize AI to make uh, you know, bring more impactful results for our clients to make our own firms more efficient, maybe bring in more innovative and creative thinking, uh, you know, into how we're servicing our clients. So I think uh, there's a huge potential for AI and public relations to go hand in hand because it can create a faster turnaround time. You know, there's a crisis situation happening. You need some information very fast. AI can bring that out. What we would do on a Google search for two hours, you can right. probably get it in two minutes. But then how do we utilize that for personalization of communication? How do we use it to understand user behavior? You know, at HNK, we use Brandwatch. We use Global, Global Well Index to understand data insights that are happening in the industry to understand consumer. But that personalization still comes from the PR professionals. And I think we can really, really efficiently use AI to maybe enhance the level of strategic thinking, creative content, brainstorming, and spend more time on those aspects by automating some tasks by using AI. Absolutely. So our jobs are secure. Dipti, <laughs> would you like to add to that? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I've I, my answer is going to be more from the other side of the table in terms of having been on brand side and kind of, you know, uh, having interacted with PR professionals. Now, some of the requests that goes from us marketeers to PR professionals is, you know, have authored articles, have industry articles, you know, and all of this end of the day requires a lot of research from the PR team to sort of put this together. Um, it also requires a lot of research on what is happening in global markets to sort of, you know, also any thought leadership article that you're going to, you know, write is going to be more future looking than just finding out what is going to be on Google. So while you can build a straw man or a skeleton for an article, mm -hmm. essentially what makes it worth the time of the reader is the practical experience. 
is the fact that you know this is what i am going through here and now and these are the nuggets of my experiential wisdom that is going to help the reader and that is what makes it you know um enjoyable and rich Absolutely. in terms of knowledge right so i think um, whether it is prprofit.com whether it is presspal i think there are a lot of ai tools for uh, my friends in pr uh, to use but i definitely do think that when an article will come to me i will know uh, you know is this just uh, done by ai or is my friend in pr you know is there a hand in there cuz i know the okay. signature this is a very imp- interesting point you know i was a part of this discussion on a global platform earlier this week where a lot of agencies world over were concerned about transparency confidentiality and plagiarism now these have been a challenge in the current framework itself without ai but with the free use of ai how do you keep you know sensitive business information and data breaches from happening like you mentioned this is a gut feel that you had been going by right but that gut feel might not be developed by just about everybody so let's i'm going to throw back this question to you dipti how do you prevent something like this happening so um i think for everybody who's probably watching this i think it's important to understand how the process of pr works end of the day the company is giving a brief saying let's say there's a product launch right this is what my product launch is these are the details of the product or let's say i have a campaign launch then the company is giving details on this is what my campaign launch is or let's say this is an announcement of a brand endorsement or it's a value, uh, you know uh, yeah. a funding announcement whatever it is the brief actually goes from the company to the prnc it is not something that is already on internet mm-hmm. that you can just quickly research and you know put something together these are very very specific information so those are you will be very surprised you will be very surprised we have received uh, brand rfps which are chat gpt copied and sent to us without even those uh, the copy icon is very prominent and if you don't you know copy it from the copy icon you actually get all the labels so we've got rfps which have been complete chat gpt copied so <laughs> i would beg to differ tarun <laughs> tarun can i add something tarun ji can i add something yeah. here you know going on to what deepthi was saying see there there i mean i'm a former journalist right so we take plagiarism very seriously and mm-hmm. i'm very very gung ho about giving credit where credit is due Mm-hmm. but i think that is an I- issue that comes down to the kind of people that you have in your team and what our work ethic as pr professionals is ai or no ai yeah it is our responsibility to do right by our client and even right by our teams or our own organization so right. when it i mean if you can use chat gpt i think it's completely okay for someone to use chat gpt to suddenly find 20 pieces of information in 2 minutes uh and save mm-hmm. them for one hour of google search but if you're going to copy paste that and send that to the client or have it published or use it in an authored article that is not ai's fault that's a people problem that we people have problem. it comes down <laughs> to finding the right people for us very interesting uh jagruti yes i would just like to say that thank god we vintage people are still around <laughs> because it's difficult to handhold this young generation and you know does suffer what is copied what is not copied i think vintage is going to be the theme of this uh, conversation on AI, absolutely right <laughs> rahul your perspective oh you have addressed the fossil in the room <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll we'll and, respect the gray for now <laughs> and this is an overwhelmingly uh, women major women majority panel so I had soft to exchange for media for this <laughs> about time yes of course uh, just a day or two after the women's reservation bill was passed so <laughs> congratulations awesome so uh, but the one question whenever you know new technology new things come uh, into the picture uh, there are certain parameters and certain questions that we must ask is ai uh, similar to the invention of wheel is it that big a deal hmm. is it as good as the the invention of internet is it going to to revolutionize or trans, or, or be an agent of transformation and if it is an agent of transformation will it will it be uh, like the invention of fire or electricity 
how will it change our lives hmm. that is the fundamental question i think that we need to ask uh, because we have been doing pr we have been doing communication even when there was no technology to say agree but rahul see this is a fact that it is changing our lives whether we like it or not when in the i think for the last 5 or 10 years we've been cribbing about the quality of writing happening on both you know brand as well as agency as well as sometimes even journalism as a field right when that has always been a challenge how is it now with the invent advent of ai that is it's already impacting our lives right that there was my next point like people who can kind of identify this is copied from somewhere this i know has not this is not the writing style but in this when this scenario is presented to us keeping sensitive information in or preventing a data breach is becoming even more problematic problematic right we do have confidentiality clauses within our agreements etc all of it right how do you how do you enforce it what i was saying is uh, one that it is going to be transformative but we also have to be custodians of two things one is ethics mm. that is that is a challenge that the leadership faces secondly what is the kind of work culture that we are promoting one we all know uh, our gray hair does you know <laughs> will stand us by that we know the right workers from the wrong ones we must not and i emphasize on this point that we must not promote the lazy ones from those ultimately ai is a tool for good work yeah for a better governance for better productivity but it is a tool it is an assistant it cannot overwhelm the work culture that we wish to develop mm -hmm. with the advent of email also with the advent of the internet also the work culture is a leadership domain that is a challenge before the leadership hmm. and that is where the leadership must come into play and that is where say it may be a big revolution but that revolution the direction of the revol that revolution needs to be guided by the leadership this is the point i was making very well very well put uh, jagriti and suprit you had something to add uh something along the lines of what he said you know i mean uh, and what i said earlier that it eventually it boils down to the ethics and what kind of you know servicing we want to offer and i don't think that's an ai problem that's a problem that can exist with various other things again i'll go back to the days when i was a journalist if there was news about a brand that came out and we wanted to find that information out we would call every possible branch head every employee who was a friend of a friend of a friend and try to get information out but to the, and if and same for the pr agencies that we were dealing with right we'd call our friends in the pr agency and say yaar bata do na kya hone wala hai what is the leader thinking bro bolo matlab kuch to hint de de mai abhi nahi publish kar you know all of that we've done it we've all journalists do it everyone wants to find that information out that's part of our kra then hmm. now being on the other side the part of the kra is to make sure that your client's information you treat it as your own and you hold it close to you and you treat it right and you do what is justice to it AI can actually help you enhance it quite a bit. You can use social media listening tools to understand where the sentiment on the brand is going. Is it going in the right direction? If it's not going in the right direction, you can have it flagged to you at the right time so you can take corrective action right. to turn things around for your client. Okay, you can use AI to understand your target audience and I mean use that information to work on something that can more effectively target that audience. Right. So. like he mentioned that you know ai is a tool right and if we use the tool right we really can enhance what we're going to service our clients or how we're going to service our clients what ai isn't is a shortcut essay writing or the article writing tool and that is now how it should be used and that's not the only skill set that ai provides it can be really, used like that <laughs> yeah like it can really deep dive into giving you insights giving you data saving you time on information so you have more time for you know brainstorming uh fine and analyzing audience analyzing sentiment flagging of negative news if we use i mean the spectrum of what ai can do for us to make us better pr professionals and actually increase value to our clients is mm -hmm. huge mm -hmm. but yeah i think we need to train our newer teams on how to utilize it i think there needs to be of course the talk about ethics 
is is flat out that existed 10 years ago 20 years ago it exists right now uh but it but it can be a transformational tool i don't think it's a small peg that is going to come and go i think it can become part of an everyday uh working sop that you have uh to do you know faster better work mm. you know in fact i'll agree with uh, shupri uh during my days of journalism as well as 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 her so uh, I, I, i am i am trying to find that nexus in the panel itself <laughs> awesome so you know, plagiarism you... was always looked down upon hmm. plagiarism was in the newsroom if somebody plagiarized one sentence it was you know uh, th- th- that was the holy cow moment for many of us and but i also agree with her that this is the computer it hmm. is something that we must deliberate and ethics come very heavily into the picture hmm. that we must emphasize on on how ethics is going to play a role because that is something will decide the course for the future and we will be answerable to the future absolutely and ethics also play a role in one of the points that you touched upon rahul earlier was bias right ai generated content whether it's text videos or pictures we see a lot of people putting up mid journey pictures nowadays right it's based on existing data and as ai learns to think like humans there is also a strong possibility it will learn all our biases and it's being prevalent in especially video and uh, image context in currently and very soon you know internationally also people are seeing it creep into text format now as pr professionals where especially in a profession where optics matter and we have worked very hard to create a strong positive uh, inclusive reputation for a particular brand that we are working on how do you think that the reputation industry can mitigate this particular risk of ai not copying our own biases jagriti i'd like your inputs on this first so um tarun ji interesting question once again i'll take a step back to say one thing is that ai is going to help us save time for sure it's like you know reading 100 books but not the books the back page the back cover of the book that gives you a gist of the topic it if that helps us well and good but tomorrow a well researched pers- perspective or ideation for that you have to read a book you have to go get inside the book you can't just rely on the back cover of the book mm-hmm. now um answering your question biases exist everywhere i know be it online offline with ai without ai so at the end of the day if the biases are so curled out with a repetition of the same ask and if that really sells well good we we party it's a party time but if it doesn't i think that's a question we are asking how to really do that and i think to stay in the game and to and stay in the game of reputation management whether it's personal or company reputation or a firm's reputation either ways i think authenticity and breaking through the clutter is going to help us so that's when i say that constant is um, change is the constant okay so as we want to change and be you know is the game ai will also have to do the same thing it's going to mirror the human mind so as long as the human mind is alert and want and knows what is right and wrong and what sells and doesn't sell i think that's where ai is going to be the buddy otherwise it could disrupt in a different way so uh, interestingly you know when you mention this it's it's the human mind that will need to be even more agile more active more alert to be able to deal with the ai challenge as well however with everybody talking about you know replacements departments being replaced by ai replaced by chat gpt for that matter um we've seen a certain amount of you know uh, there is a mood of the industry that is shifting towards possibly a doom scenario now in your own teams you know how do you think these changes are impacting employee morale and engagement shupreet we'll start with you you wanted to address the earlier question as well so kind of related to that itself i think one very important aspect and maybe i'm a bit of an idealist over here and again old fashioned in my thinking but a very very important part of working in any organization and a very important part of public relations 
is relationships right i mean uh, at the end of the day pr and pr team is the extended team of the corpcom the corpcom is the extended team of the leadership okay there's a relationship that's a human relationship and an an ai cannot it can maybe think like us like maybe let's say what you were saying does end up happening right that they're thinking ai is thinking faster it already knows how i write it knows how i think it knows i'm going to you know take it out and like give the information out but there is something about sitting together and discussing what's the next steps that the ai cannot do right this thing about picking up the phone when a crisis goes and being able to call a ceo that you spent 3 years building a relationship with and saying okay you know what i know you don't want to hear this from me but i need you to trust me and this is what we're going to do and that is a long term relationship building that we do with our teams that our teams do with the corpcom that we as leaders do with the leadership of our clients and mm-hmm. that i don't think is going anywhere and like i said maybe i'm an idealist over here but i genuinely don't think that can be relate uh, you know replaced and i think that's a very very core of how the journalism a journalist client or slash brand and pr agency relationship network works absolutely uh, that's so invaluable that i think is still very very core that's, and very solid <laughs> that's invaluable thank you for that uh, dipti uh, i actually wanted to react to uh, what uh, was being said earlier first in terms of ai picking on our biases i have actually and i'm sure all of us have seen uh, recently about a food company uh, which tagged a police um, on on something which which was just supposed to be a i would say um, a tweet and jest and you know was kind of uh, drum rolled and you know we all know the consequences of it that was done by human not by ai so it doesn't matter um you know I, i'm going to be a little bit of devil's advocate here and say let's not all blame ai as if as humans we are just you know so perfect and we are just doing it so well uh, i mean come on there are the whole reason why somebody wants to get a ai or a program is to avoid these very jarring errors that humans are doing and i had something very similar in my own company where instead of replying to a dm uh, an employee actually commented on a post which was there to view for all of our 10000 followers and i had to immediately you know tell them listen this is what you have done uh, so there are you know examples of errors that humans have done that you know some way you can program an ai to say listen remove biases you can do that to a program but you cannot just talk to a human being and tell them to remove biases it doesn't happen so we learn worse than what an ai does so there are definite advantages and i think there is a higher chance of ai not having biases and humans not having biases so that that's that needs Very to be well put said you know um, but i also want to address your question on you know loss of jobs uh, i am a startup i started 7 months ago and when we had to get uh, an art director my creative director said no need i'll handle it you know i got mid journey uh, our ai director is called vai dehi v a i dehi you know so uh, and and he started you know putting out these creatives and it was fun it was great the client was approving everything went very well and now work has increased he has no time to put vai dehi into action we need an art director so it's not like jobs are going eventually the jobs are going to be there you know uh, but yes will it help a startup like me who might not be able to afford you know 10 people you know fast track then yes but eventually i do need a graphic designer to use whether he uh, and, and to kind of put these creatives in a way that can be presented to client respectably right um Absolutely. so what I, what i really think is look here's what it is the way we all learned instagram whether we like it or not is a different question but we had to we we didn't have option the problem is when we behave like ai does not exist or the problem is when we behave like we don't need to learn ai mm. that's not the solution i think uh, there is this wonderful channel called overpowered.ai run by tanmay bhat um, on instagram i really recommend everybody to follow it because every day there is a new tool that's coming up um there are cg videos of uh, top brands that are on linkedin that we are all you know lusting at and saying wow what a fabulous asset those assets were not going to get created without ai it's not like that as it took anybody's job nobody is doing that anyway right no, so absolutely a- you're very right you know it's leveled the playing field for let's say a lot of firms especially when it comes to small mid size and boutique firms to be able to play the you know uh, play the game 
uh, be in the be in the game, so to say, uh, reducing the need for a large workforce. But you know, when you're talking about this, it it kind of this question comes to mind. There is a very strong need for a proper framework and guidelines for communicators and for our PR industry as a whole. While we all spoke about ethics, and ethics is still a very well debated topic in the entire PR industry, and it's a very thin line. Uh, with AI coming in, I think there is still a very strong need for communicators to form a guideline for the entire PR professional community to follow and adhere to. So do you think this is something that should happen, one, and who should be taking this up? Should this be the government or a PR apex body? Rahul, would like your views on this first. Uh, thank you. In fact, uh, let's not miss the artificial in AI. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's not miss that. That's important. And I think that the government, uh, certainly any new technology, which has the potential of revolutionizing the way we work, the way we perform, and the way we interact, has to have uh, a say of the government. Mm. Must be regulated. It cannot go unchecked. Mm. It has huge potential. It has it has huge potential. And as I'll agree with uh, Deepthi that we have made mistakes and blunders. Every war and every act of violence is an example of the fact that we have not learned from our past. So we must learn from our past, and we must not let AI go unregulated, unchecked. Right. There, whether it is self-regulation, whether there is a need for a regulation by the government, because uh, if it is unchecked, uh, there is every chance of this being misused. Hmm. Uh, crony capitalism is against a mistake of the human mind, but it does exist. Hmm. So uh, we, we will have to be very careful on, on how AI is uh, helping us. So therefore, I do not uh, rule out the fact that the government must have a rule, uh, must have a role. Two, uh, we must also uh, see to it how democratize. Is it in any way going to democratize the way we function, mm -hmm. whether it is within the organization or or outside of the government? Does it democratize? Does it empower? If these do, if these two fundamental points are in our minds, I don't think AI, after all, is artificial. Will go astray. Okay, okay, that's a very uh, optimistic view of it, and it's like I agree. It's like a child that is being taught, and I hope we teach it better. But let's get down to you know your personal integration uh, of tech into your work. So, what are three top three AI tools that you have personally used, you've been impressed with, and you've integrated in your daily work. Shupreet, let's start with you on that. So we kind of uh, rely on a uh, couple of our internal tools quite a bit. One is called Brandwatch. It's like a social listening tool. And I think that's like an everyday tool for us. So we use it to see what key things uh, is, our, is our client's brand being resonated with and how do we need to bring about a change. We also use it for measurement before and after campaigns to see did we actually manage to achieve the result in terms of uh, having that brand resonation come alive. Uh, we use it to see where the client sentiment in the market is it positive, negative, neutral, how much is it changing, emotions, what emotions are tied to the brand. So these are something, this is something we use pretty much on a daily basis when we're working for our clients and uh, definitely one before coming up with campaign ideas to see what information does it give it and then also after campaigns to measure if we actually manage to do what we intended to do for our client. Uh, there's also something called GWI where, um, where we use it to break down audiences for us, you know, to understand which audience is relevant for the client, what are the personas, uh, what are they interested in? What is influencing them? Most importantly, we want to, you know, know where are they getting their information? Where are they consuming their content? And what is actually influencing them to cause a behavior change? And see how we can use those insights and create a campaign that is not just a campaign for being out there, for being loud, but actually having a, a change that takes it from brand recall to brand relationship. Um, I know my teams have used chat GT, GT, GPT to in, take out information. No, no, let's, let's make that as a constant that everybody's been using chat GPT. So that's one of the tools that you integrated. Uh, 
Let's talk we about also, the two other ones. Yeah, we, we also have something called Influence Plus uh, and that helps us. I mean, there again, for all of these tools, and I think this is going to summarize what all of us have already been discussing. These are tools that we use, but there's a huge amount of human intervention after the data pullout. So Influence Plus helps us find the right kind of influencer. That doesn't mean only big influencers. It's not dependent upon following numbers. It's Absolutely. dependent upon relevance. But again, we do a lot of human intervention for the next round of filtering. Same for Brandwatch, same for GWI. So yeah, we have, we, I think already have a good mix of human AI integration going on. Uh, we of course want to take it to the next level. So let's see. So brilliant. So from you, it's GWI and Brandwatch, right? Brandwatch Dipti. and Influence Plus. Yeah. Okay. Dipti, what about you? Sorry, so you've taken ChatGPT out of the equation, so I'm going to leave that. Uh, Pepper.ai, which is a tool to write, uh, you know, add uh, copies is definitely something that we have uh, used. It also helps in SEO. Um, I think ChatGPT also helps in SEO. Uh, so Pepper.ai definitely is one. Um, in fact, I want to say that the if you go to decisionpinnacle.com and the first image that comes to you is actually AI generated. It's generated from a tool called Deep AI. It's an image, it's a text to image generator. So what I very specifically wanted was chess pieces, glass chess pieces, purple tint, gold tint, and AI throughout the perfect image for me with a couple of rounds of iteration. So Deep AI, which is a uh, text to image generator. And of course there's mid journey for all of our uh, video and imaging needs. You've Those given us four. Rahul? Uh, we use Write Sonic, which is the alternative to uh, Chat GPT and, and in some shades a little better. So, but first of all, let me say uh, there is no organizational push towards any of the AI tools. Hmm. So, so hence, not... I'm asking you personally because I know organizations as a whole are still resistant towards your... So we are not resistant. We are working cautiously. Cautiously. Okay. Let me put it cautiously then. The tools that you have been impressed with and have so, integrated into your life. Right. Sonic is great. Okay. Uh, the uh, the other one is Pitch Prefer. That again is something that people can use. Mm -hmm. And uh, third, I suggest this to the young ones is don't hesitate using Grammarly. Yes, perfect. Can, I, can I just say thumbs up to that one, journalist to journalist, <laughs> proper journalist to journalist. I think in those days, we used to rely on thesaurus.com quite a bit. And I was so happy when Grammarly came out because I was the generation when the internet just came out. So yeah, thumbs up on that one. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you so much. Jagruti? Well, I would depend on all this through our agencies. <laughs> <laughs> so you provide the human intervention, right? <laughs> yes, I love the aggregators here. As corporates, it's very difficult to have all this on the system. So, okay, so then let me give you a different question. Let, let me give you a different question, right? So yes. will you tell your leadership team, agencies, that the content that is being generated was or been submitted to them, it was done by AI? Will that live that level of transparency be acceptable without replacing departments or humans in India? Oh, of course. I mean, as of today, the way we feel vintage people are intelligent, our CEOs are far more intelligent. So <laughs> what they expect is not just a script, right? Someone has to speak that out, has to deliver. And I think that makes the whole difference. So it's easy to copy, but then how do you deliver it? And do you then intersperse that with stories, with personal experience, with emotions? That's something I think leaves to the human as of now. And I don't see it changing for at least a decade more. And I would love to see the fact that one day we all are sitting here, or maybe we are not. It's just the robots who are just answering and asking questions. Then I would wonder who is the audience. I live <laughs> at... <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Dipti, what about you? Would you, you know, give it out to the client that this has been generated by AI? This has been created by AI? Absolutely. And uh, I also am on the client side sometimes. So it's, it's a bit of a hybrid role that I play. Uh, and let's just say somebody tells, forget telling the client that it's AI. I go and tell the agency sometimes, just create something out of AI. I don't have money to produce it by shooting. You know, so it's, it's, it's also sometimes about the fact that you can produce more assets at a lower cost and you're perfectly fine using AI, machine technology, whatever is out there. 
because I am expected to produce new content on Instagram every day. Where is the money gonna come from? And we are in a content race game, whether we acknowledge it or not. So I'll take any help that comes my way. Fantastic. Now, Rahul and Chupreet, as former journalists, right? While you might be fine with Grammarly because it corrects grammar, right? To be able to generate something, if you've seen Chat GPT four, it's absolutely brilliant or bad. Uh, I pretty much like that. So. Uh, would you be open to letting your clients know that this content, this piece of content has been generated by AI? So, see, I do, like I said, at the core of it lies the relationship. So I do believe in being very, very transparent with clients. But the one thing I think I would never allow my team to do, and I don't think my team will do it as well, uh, is plagiarize. So it's okay to use chat GPT for research and tell the client that, listen, we had 10 minutes. You wanted this information. We typed it in. We got all of this. This is what we filtered out is relevant. Let us know if something is missing. The whole point is to work together with your client as one team. So that's fine. If you've used, I think one of the tools that Deepti talked about, we've tried it out. We've not actually used it for a client, but we've sat and experimented with it, which is the text to image generator. And that really does throw out some really good results. Hmm. And it is more efficient, more cost effective and effect and, you know, impactful as well. Right. Uh, and if we get an opportunity to use that for a client, we'll actually tell the client, uh, that, you know, we've tried it through this. Of course, this is the variation that a designer came out with. And this is the variation we got out of an AI tool. Let us know what works. But what we have to do before we go to the client is ensure there isn't a duplicate copy outside. Someone else hasn't done the same okay. thing. Make sure tool there's no plagiarism. plagiarism. Tool yeah. plagiarism. Let me come that, to that. That check From we have. You and, uh, you and Rahul, I want the one tool that you would recommend others use to check for plagiarism. Um, I've forgotten the name. There is something that most universities, even we used to choose where we would put essays in and it would dig out, maybe Rahul knows, but where it, and even during our uh, copies and submission of story deadlines, uh, mm -hmm. it just pulls out sentences from the internet if they've been copy pasted, even a sentence or a phrase. And then you filter out, see, sometimes you use a metaphor, which is a well-known metaphor. So that of course you'll ignore. But right. something that's directly copied, I, I've forgotten the name of it. But uh, yeah, worst case scenario, do a simple Google search, guys. Like it, it pops up for a client. Uh, but having said that, boils down to the fact the team needs to know that your manager should not have to check. Like to a client, something plagiarized cannot go. Something plagiarized cannot go on a live platform, cannot go to a newspaper, cannot go to a digital media. Absolutely. That's just, just Absolutely. That's <laughs> Rahul, back her up on this, the plagiarism. Uh, yes. In fact, there are certain UGC recommended plagiarism uh, uh, tools hmm. which check uh, any copy that goes as a synopsis or a PhD or, M or, or an MPhil uh, article. So, so there are a couple of them. There are a couple of them. And, and plagiarism also, you know, for the, for the kind of literature that we develop, I think one glance and you can tell that whether it is plagiarized or not. So it, it is the Glass human is mind. It's very subjective. So you need to give me one tool that you recommend for the PR industry that they must use this for plagiarism. There are a couple of them. I, I think I'll have to uh, recollect. Uh, give me some time. I will. Okay. So we're <laughs> it doesn't come time immediately to my mind. Uh, to wrap there are so up. many of them. There are so many of them. So after this session is over, Rahul, if you can go down to the comment section and give us a couple will, of will, recommendations, that will be will, wonderful. Will, so last question that will go to everybody. Think of this as a rapid fire uh, because it seems like the next generation of PR professionals will need an entirely new skill set, right? So to wrap this up, I want to hear from each one of you on the panel, your top three picks for new skills that the graduating class of 2024 needs to acquire. Dipti, we'll start with you. Three so I, want, I, I want to first say it's detect text. That's the AI tool to check if an article is written on GPD. Uh, uh -huh. That helps. Um, I think uh, the first and the most important thing that any class, not just PR, but any class will need is to understand that there is a reason why liberal arts is now the most taken course throughout the world. Uh, and that's because you know companies like Google, Microsoft, um, Intel are now going ahead and recruiting children who are studying liberal arts because if there's one thing you can't replicate through AI, it's humanness. Um, so it's the empathy, it's the you know power of perception. Um, so the human quotient or the HQ is definitely one skill to pick up, hone, uh, continue to get better throughout life. The second is gonna be integrity. 
end of the day it doesn't matter which role you are in which job you are playing where you are at which you're going to be known for your integrity for the rest of your career just starting your career uh, and that kind of is a stamp that stays with you for the rest of your life and the third and the most important is have fun um, <laughs> don't take yourself so seriously uh, we've all on this esteemed panel made mistakes learned from it and been here after that so have fun uh, but just make sure that it is not at the cost of integrity awesome jamjati three skills oh well yeah being authentic i think that's very very important for me and i would want my team or my students to definitely being authentic second is emotions or eq because in today's world that is the differentiator the real differentiator and and especially in the topic that we are discussing and third to have the prudence to take the right shots okay rahul uh one would be willingness to learn and reinvent oneself uh, i think that that is something that i would recommend the second would be uh close to what deepthi said empathy right uh third i would recommend and that is a dying art is read i love that <laughs> but read oh. read the book not gpt <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, Shubhri. So I think uh, uh, you know recently I did a LinkedIn post on one of my first bosses who was my editor at Economic Times and uh, there I had mentioned that real confidence actually comes from being freely open to learn more and knowing that you don't know everything. So for me the first one would be confidence but actual confidence confidence not that I know everything. confidence that i don't know everything and i think that's a very important attitude to have be it in a pr job any job second is integration i think integration skills in the day and age of today's pr are very important uh, and the second you realize that you need to know what integrated pr offerings are then tools like ai or social media coming up or digital media coming up or video production coming up is not going to scare you you're going to try and understand each and every one of them and figure out how to work it into the ecosystem and the third is most importantly work ethic so i think when you have the right work ethic then on your own you don't take shortcuts on your own wrong information will not know on on your own you'll be honest to your client you'll be honest to your lead you'll be honest with your teams you'll be collaborative with your teams uh, so yeah i think those are the three things i kind of look for when i'm hiring as well these are the three absolutely skills. lovely to have these skill sets uh, put out here none of you mentioned a tech skill or an ai skill to be put out there We can i say, can i say something on that i genuinely believe that if the person has the anyone has the intent to work they will pick up the skills that are needed absolutely absolutely so we will all try we will all focus on developing the human behind the ai the human behind the computer and it's lovely to have all of you share these views and these skill sets because i think these are the ones that will actually define how the entire pr industry also moves forward with the next generation of workforce that comes in so fantastic thank you for this vibrant discussion this is an ongoing discussion i know it's a never ending one but i do hope we see ai integration in pr creating a future where we have to do less grunt work and let the humans do the big picture thinking and making sure that the gray the old the vintage wins <laughs> <laughs> awesome over to you karan thank you so much karan thank you thank you so much to all our panelists thank you so much uh, tarun ji for moderating that thank you we couldn't have asked a better start to the day thank you so much awesome the pleasure is ours thank you so much thank you everyone thank Bye. you everyone